Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Turley. And might I say, awesome podcast listener, that you are just looking fabulous today. All right, I know I can't see you, but I wanted to flatter you a little because I'm looking for reviews. I'm looking for your feedback. I hope that you're enjoying this season three of the podcast, but I would love to know if you are or not. You can reach out via email if you have some negative feedback. Podcast at fitarmadillo.com is the best way to get in touch. And if you have positive feedback, be sure, you know, I'd love to have an email. Well, I can't talk. Oh my goodness. I would love to have an email from you about your positive review. But before you do that, please go actually leave that review on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts so that other people can find the show and that you'll really make my day. And then if you want to take a screenshot and email me and maybe I'll do something nice for you. I don't want to bribe you, but maybe I'll do something nice for you in return. Uh, That would be awesome. But in all seriousness, I do want to make sure I'm asking for reviews because I have a lot of great listeners. I have almost 3,000 subscribers over on Podbean. But that's not really reflected in the review, so I'm trying to be better. I don't want to get fired from my own podcast show about asking for reviews. So that's really helpful. Hope that you're able to leave a rating and review if you're enjoying the show. And a note on that, I know many of you actually do listen to the show on Facebook. So if you didn't realize that you can listen to the show elsewhere, go head over to wherever you listen to either music, because we are on Spotify, or your podcasts like iTunes, Stitcher, and see if you can find the Fit15. If you can, awesome. Listen to us there. Leave your review there. If you can't, let me know and I will see what I can do to make sure we are on the platform that you prefer to use. All right, that's one housekeeping thing. A second housekeeping thing I did want to mention today is an idea I have, so this might be something you email me about. Because I do have episodes five days a week, there's a new show when we're in season. And I know not all of you can listen to every single episode, even though I would love for you to do that. I thought I would start doing some themes for the days. So I'm still working on all my themes, but loosely what I'll have, at least this week for sure, is on Tuesday. So today, kind of a travel tip Tuesday theme. Some version of health and fitness meets travel and or adventure. So it's a loose theme, but those of you who like traveling and like thinking about new experiences, new adventures, and enjoying your fitness that way, Tuesdays are going to be a good episode for you to check out. And Wednesdays are definitely going to continue to be, because this was true last week, a food-focused episode. Last week I had on registered dietitian and cookbook author Maya Feller, who recently published her book, The Southern comfort food diabetes cookbook and you can check out that episode and her tips and then tomorrow I will have on another amazing guest who I was able to meet in person last month actually and she's just awesome she has several cookbooks really awesome social media email list so I don't want to spoil that one for you but that will continue that theme and I'll continue to do Wednesdays as a food focused episode so whether we're sharing recipes or healthy eating tips You can kind of think of it as a What's for Dinner Wednesday episode, which is keeping in theme to what I used to do on my blog. So if you do want some other recipe ideas, you can always go to fitarmadillo.com slash blog and see things that I was able to make, so they have to be fairly easy, uh, by going to the blog to find those old but good recipes. All right. Is that all I have for housekeeping? No, I have one more thing. I wanted to mention that You guys have been so sweet and helping me get my book to be a bestseller. So I want to thank you again for that. If you are looking for help finding and keeping your fitness motivation, especially this busy time of year heading into the holidays, we're very close to Thanksgiving and that's where things start to get really crazy. Please go check out the book. 
Superwomen Secrets Revealed, successful women talk about fitting and fitness and dare you to join them. It's currently available for just 99 cents as an ebook. So you can find that by going to the show notes or fitarmadillo.com slash Kindle. That will take you, take you, I can't talk today, I'm sorry, directly to the Amazon page where you can get the ebook for just 99 cents to celebrate it being a bestseller in three categories. I've been doing that because I really want you to enjoy the book. So if you haven't gotten your copy yet, please do. This is going to help you stay motivated. And I know many of you are like me and you like to read a paperback book, but I don't know. I feel like it's nice to preview the book first. So wanted to make that option available for you before the holidays. And then also this book actually does lend itself really well to an ebook format to make you aware of something many people aren't aware of, you actually don't need to have a Kindle to purchase and enjoy the Kindle version. So I hope you'll check that out. And thank you so much to all of you who have already read the book, left a review, those keep coming in, and they're just making my day. And I'm so glad that this project that was a challenge for me is resonating with many of you and providing you value. And I can't wait to continue to see how you engage with the book and how it helps you in your life. All right, I'm going to bring on today's guest who is having me think I need to start practicing my German again because she is an author and her current book, her memoir, is in German. And I was able to look at it a little bit and recognize a few words, so we'll have to see. Maybe I I start practicing my German so I can read her book. But I wanted to have her on before then to share her story or parts of her story anyways with those of you who may or may not decide you want to learn German with me. And that's what we'll be doing today is chatting about her story. So my guest today is Nicole Lichewski. Nicole emigrated to Canada from Germany in her mid-20s after falling in love with British Columbia as a live-in nanny. She bounced around the country for a few years and eventually put down roots in the far northwest close to the Alaskan border. For the past 14 years, she's been living 20 miles from the closest road in a log cabin she built with her partner at the time. Her mode of transportation is pretty much exclusively her feet and her kayak. Friends, before I bring Nicole on, because I had so many housekeeping things for you, we are actually halfway through that 15-minute mark already. That's your sound bite. So if you were joining us and trying to use today and the episode to get in an out-and-back walk but only have 15 minutes, you will want to turn around now. All right, here is my guest, Nicole, and our conversation. Well, Nicole, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited and honored to have you as my guest today. Thanks. I'm really excited, too, and honored as well. (laughs) Well, we met because we found out we're both authors. We're in a non-author focus group, and and you're kind of inspiring me because your book is written in German, and I, I, you know, I have a little bit of German knowledge in my brain. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, it would be fun if you wanted to have a look at it. <laughs> I, might, I might have to start studying again so I can read it. But could you tell us, yeah, I wanted to have you on because you have a lot of experiences that you shared about in that book and, and maybe my audience won't start studying German with me. So I wanted to still have you share your wisdom from that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Um, yeah, basically, I, I wrote the book about uh, what it's like to uh, live out in the bush off grid without any road access uh, year round as sort of your long term lifestyle. So mm. not just like a, a one year thing or a few months get away, but uh, I've been living like that for 14 years now. Mm. And uh, I kind of uh, decided to to write a book about it because I noticed a lot of books about wilderness living kind of deal with the first year, but building a log cabin and, mm. you know, trying to kind of find your footing out there, but then it always stops in the end. Like it always just, most books just seem to deal with the first year out there and then that's kind of it. And, right. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, in a way, um, to me, it becomes more interesting after a few years, you know, once that's kind of your daily life and you've got your routine and it's not all new and shiny and exciting anymore as it was in the beginning. <laughs> sure, sure. No, it's yeah. all, and how many years has it been now that, that you've had that that's been your lifestyle? 
uh, 14 years, I moved out there with uh, my now ex-partner, but we still live out there together in 2005. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. What are like some of the, I guess, any like surprising challenges and then like surprising, you know, things that are, that make you keep doing it? Cause now it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um surprising challenges i think uh the biggest challenge actually hasn't been living out there but more um coming back into town mm. and uh, doing the shopping <laughs> sure <laughs> because, because i've always hated shopping <laughs> uh, never enjoyed it i get like no satisfaction from it and now imagine i live uh a hundred uh 40 miles i guess it would be um away from the closest supermarket and mm. uh during early winter there's a time period of about uh three and a half months where i can't get out at all like to mm. the post road or anywhere because it takes the uh, lakes that i have to cross to get to the closest road and village that long to freeze up like with wow. the ice to get yeah. enough so you can cross it safely so imagine like having to grocery shop for months at a time <laughs> and uh, you just get so overwhelmed when you get out there because uh when you live out in the wilderness it's all fairly quiet and uh you just basically have the trees and the wind and the sound the waves make when the lake is open and you know birds maybe singing but that's pretty much it and then you come to town and it's like traffic fumes. <laughs> there's people all over the place and uh it's just so much noisier and there's just so much like so much sensory input that it's right. like some of this hits you into the head and then you know you have to go into the supermarket and <laughs> Try to grab your, I don't know, 10 packages of pasta or whatever. And uh, yeah, I just find that uh, extremely stressful actually to the <laughs> point where I, uh, for the past five years or so, I actually have an expediter. So it's people who do that shopping for me because I just found it too much to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, well, then you can, you can kind of think, I mean, I think a lot of us that probably most people listening don't live that lifestyle right now. And so, you know, I know I get stressed when I go to the store right now. And if you just think about how often, like, I'm experiencing that and people listening are experiencing that versus you are, like, how much of a benefit it could be just like eliminating those things, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah totally and like to me it's really worth it to pay somebody to pay somebody 200 bucks to do the shopping for me and uh, you know pack it all up into nice cardboard boxes and then they can stick it on a bush plane or a boat and then I just have to receive it in my back <laughs> it's just so much easier and uh yeah like i i find uh so that that was actually for me personally the biggest challenge in moving yes. out it's maybe weird but that's what it is no that's well i mean it, it seems it's funny because it's 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 different because it's you know this long-term thing you have to plan for but the stress of the of the shopping is something that I think everyone can relate to in the day to day, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, especially with Christmas coming closer. Yes, now. yes, yes. No, for sure, for sure. Now, what initially, Nicole, had you think you wanted to to try this? I know I share with you. I recently did a cross country trip, and I spent some time in like some remote places, and I was like, very. I'm like, wow, this is. They weren't as remote as what you're talking about, but I, I can definitely see the allure of a simpler life. Uh, but what, what kind of brought you to that point? Well, it's pretty, my, pretty much my uh, ex-boyfriend's <laughs> fault. <laughs> um, we both, uh, we actually met in the closest village to where we now live. And uh, I already lived off-grid at that time. And I just built my own cabin there, not really knowing what I was doing. But 
actually <laughs> building your own house is, is fairly straightforward. Like it's really okay. not rocket science. Anybody can do it. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, it's not difficult to do. It just takes time and you know, you get sore muscles, but that's about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we already lived kind of remotely there because um, it's, it's a little village of 350 people that sits at, a, at the end of a dead end road. Um, and from there, it's 120 miles to the closest city. So to me, I was like, well, I, I kind of live out in the bush already. And, um, but we're both really outdoorsy people and you know we we always enjoyed going out for hikes and kayak trips doing canoeing and going skiing and snowshoeing in the winter time but um yeah so my my boyfriend at the time was like well like wouldn't it be awesome if that would be like our entire life and if we would cut this kind of safety net that you still have when you have road access where you know if anything <laughs> goes wrong you can still get into your car and uh, drive to get help or whatever or people can come out to you and help you and you can take things to a mechanic easily and all that kind of stuff um, right <laughs> If, if we would just eliminate that and just really live out in the bush instead of just always doing like weekend trips or, you know, a week here, a week there. And uh, yeah, he had to keep talking for a few months about it. <laughs> Because like, if you, if you would have asked me this um, before I started building my own place out there, I would have been all gung-ho, but I just basically invested all my money into purchasing a piece of land and I was still right. working way on, on my first house and I had my whole life set up there. I had plans for what I wanted to do with myself there. So he was basically asking me to throw that all overboard to go out and live in the bush with him. <laughs> so yeah. Um but the longer the longer I thought about it, the more appeal it started to have. Like just this idea to just be somewhere way out in the boonies and to have animals as your closest neighbors and uh yeah so then in the end I was like okay let's do it <laughs> no that's awesome no you describe it as you know as a very simple life I mean I guess I could see reasons why I would describe it that way but do you have anything else you want to share about that point yeah well it, it is kind of simple because um you can choose to set up your life in the bush or life off grid with uh, basically all the electric appliances, water pumps, plumbing, and so on and so forth that you would have in a normal city house. And it seems to me, for whatever reason, um, that a lot of places that are set up off grid uh, go that way. Like mm. most people have huge solar panel banks and uh, lots of batteries to run off all sorts of uh, things from TVs to uh, washing machines and dishwashers and so on and so forth and uh, <laughs> we we decided not to do that for one thing um, it's e extremely expensive if you decide to do that and the other thing is um, I just it was more me than my uh, boyfriend at the time that wanted to keep it really simple because I had already lived for seven years um, outside of this village without any electricity whatsoever so mm. I figured I don't need it and um, so yeah um, I mean we we carry up our water from the lake um, it's about 70 yards or so that we have to carry it up to, up to the cabin. We chose not to um, install a pump to pump it up to the cabin because we're not that <laughs> old and crippled yet that we're not able to <laughs> carry water buckets that far. And uh, yeah, so it's basically, basically everything is really low tech. And mm. um, in exchange for that, uh, we just have to be physically a bit more active which uh, keeps us in good shape and uh, yeah. saves us a gym membership, even though, of course, out there, there is no gym anyway. Basically, <laughs> the outdoors is our gym. Yeah, it's interesting because I know, I mean, the, you know, the lifestyle more and more is just, is really removing all need for physical labor in the day-to-day, -day, right? So 
living the way you do, it's, that's bringing it back to what we used to do, which is what our, we're meant to be moving, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, totally. And uh, it's, it kind of mystifies me why, um, you know, on the one hand, um, everything is becoming uh, more mechanized, and it's supposed to save us all time and effort or whatever, but we're basically all paying for that with money. And then, again, you know, people are just getting less active, and then that brings health problems with it. So then you have to take care of that again. And I think, if, if we would just cancel out some of these uh, things that are supposed to make our lives easier, but in a way don't really do that. I feel um, it would just benefit us more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. And I, I find that, you know, taking care of our health in the present and being active is, is something that will help prevent bigger issues later on. I don't know if you have, because I know I have listeners and I can think of, Maybe like my dad, who would be like, well, what if something goes wrong? What do you do? What do you, what, what do, you do? It? And do you have any, you know, if someone is considering it, you know, maybe not my dad, he would not consider probably this lifestyle, but someone is actually considering it, but they had that fear. What are some things you would tell them about, you know, about that? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, definitely um, things can go wrong and sooner or later if you live out there long enough they will go wrong and um, I mean I live in Canada so um, we do have uh, public health care there so basically um, what we do is we call an air ambulance uh, which sounds very fancy but it's really just <laughs> <laughs> it's really just the bush pilot from the next village uh, with a couple of the uh, volunteer um, ambulance people uh, <laughs> that come on the plane <laughs> with them and then kind of try to keep you from uh, keeling over um, while flying to the hospital so um, that is covered by the um, provincial health care system in Canada Mm. and um but uh it, it does take time like we had a couple of instances where we did have to call an air ambulance and you know there's it takes about two hours uh for a plane or helicopter to come and then to fly you to the hospital so if it's something really urgent then you just die <laughs> <And> <laughs> <laughs> if if something happens to you uh, in the middle of the night, uh, no helicopter, no bush plane can get to you. And in the winter time, um, you know the daylight hours are fairly short, so um, that is definitely a possibility. But I'm always thinking. On the other hand, we've eliminated out there the whole risk you run when you live. Um, in a town or even a village or somewhere to get into a car accident or get run over by a car. I mean, that's right. so common that people right. get hurt in traffic and so we don't have that at all. So right. that is gone. And yeah, someone texting and driving, right? That's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, we're just really um, health conscious out there and safety conscious. So um, we do keep an eye on when things go wrong. And we make really, really sure when we go to cut our firewood um, that we do wear all the safety equipment that you're supposed to be wearing with a chainsaw. Um, mm -hmm. just you know, because that's how it is. And I know for myself, when I still live where I had road access, um, I used to be not that, not that way. So I think, <laughs> um, you know, you, you kind of learn to keep an eye on things. But yeah, I mean, there, there is a risk and uh, you just have to accept that if you do want to live that way. Right, right. Nicole, you said that also, I mean, that this is like a very fulfilling way of life. Did you want to share anything about, about that with the listeners and how you find your fulfillment? Yeah, I, I guess, um, you know, you, re you really do have to love being out in the bush and have to have an appreciation for nature and animals to find uh, fulfillment and satis satisfaction out there. I mean, I know um, some people, sometimes there's tourists in the closest village and I've overheard people say, well, they look at the awesome scenery, like I'm talking big mountains and glaciers and a huge mm. lake and uh, forest and all that. And they stand there and look at it and say, 
how can people live this way? Like there's <laughs> nothing here. And, and to me, it's like, wow, there, there's everything here. Like there's yeah. everything um, that I get joy out of. So to me, it is really fulfilling to be looking at a landscape um, that hasn't changed in the last few thousand years um right. like there's no major human not even minor human development that i'm looking at so it all looks uh, like it did three thousand years ago basically and um so I, I i find that really fulfilling and also um when you kind of remove your yourself from the daily uh, contact with people i mean we as humans are social animals right we do need mm. some kind of social interaction even if it's just with a pet or um just over the internet or something but uh, we need to feel connected to something to feel happy and i find out there because i don't have um human neighbors there and I, my interaction uh, face to face with other people is extremely limited basically just to um, when I go out into the next village and visit friends which I do like two or three times a year so I get my um, my um, I wouldn't call it social interaction but I feel extremely connected to all the wildlife and uh, even the the forest out there around me, like I, I feel totally a part of it, and it is so amazing um, when you're out there for months at a time, and you haven't seen another human being for months. Um, my now ex partner always used to go traveling in the winter, so I'd be there all by myself um, for about three and a half to four months every winter. Oh wow! And then um, if you know when when you come across an animal like a moose, for example, at the time it just seems so incredibly precious that there is another living being out there that is sharing that space with you. Mm -hmm. Like that just totally lights me up with um such crazy joy that there is another creature <laughs> out there <Yeah>. that, <laughs> that uh yeah i i just feel super connected that way with everything that's around me because i mean i i also see the basically their daily lives like <laughs> the daily life of a moose yeah and um so, uh, yeah, I, I really feel I have sort of this uh, wilderness community of uh, animals and plants around me. And uh, that's, I guess, a very basic or simple uh, way to feel happy and fulfilled. Like it doesn't cost you anything. There's basically nothing you have to do for it. You just have to have um, your eyes open and your heart open and uh yeah it just feels i just feel extremely blessed uh being able to live out there yeah i mean well there's so much beauty around us right we try to search for it you know i guess outside of ourselves but with material things but there's a lot out there that you know is there if we we look around even in even in our busy more like suburban or, or city areas but definitely out in the wilderness so <laughs> yeah yeah for sure now i i wanted to share with listeners you know you said that i was really surprised and i guess i shouldn't be that surprised but i i like this idea of like how little it takes you to survive out there like what what did you say that you live on in a year about yeah um i live on about six thousand dollars a year <laughs> <laughs> i love that well because i think you know we kind of people feel like we have to chase this you know, this big figure and I don't know, I'm in a lot of entrepreneur circles. So people like are all about, they need to get to six figures, but you know, mm -hmm. maybe putting it out there that, that, you know, you don't need that much, you know, maybe this life is not for everyone, but just something to consider, right? Like there's, there's other, other options. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, sure, if you live like in San Francisco or New York or whatever, I mean, um, housing prices and even rent prices are, I think, 
it seems like crazy all over the world. Um, also up in northern Canada where I live, like in the closest village, you can rent a drafty little log cabin for, um, yeah, I guess about 600 US dollars a month. So mm. that's expensive, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, there's there's definitely uh, ways to um, live cheaper. Like we just look basically for a piece of land that we could afford with our savings because we didn't want to tie ourselves to a mortgage. Because of course, once you have a mortgage, then you have to have a job that pays for that mortgage. Right, right. And, uh, <laughs> and generally with, uh, you know, if you take out loans or uh, have credit card debt or whatever, then you're forcing yourself to um, have to have a certain income and to stick with your job and to spend X amount of hours a day working at that job, which is great if you love your job. Right. But uh, yeah, we just uh, wanted to have the luxury, I guess, of <laughs> Uh, being able to to spend our time the way we really wanted to so yeah it was six six thousand dollars a year that works great for me because I don't have any debts um right. I've got a roof over my head and um we grow a garden in the summer and we hunt our own meat um because the gardening season there is uh very short you're looking at about uh three and a half to four months of the year where stuff actually grows <laughs> like, sure. so, um, it's, it's difficult being a vegetarian up there if you want to eat locally you kind of have to um yeah, figure out if you want uh, to live on veggies and fruit from California for the better part of the year, or you know, if you um, if you want to uh, get into basically hunting an animal out there that has lived its life the whole time the way nature intended, and um, shooting a moose, which is what we do every couple of years. Like the meat lasts us that long. We're oh, not wow. huge meat eaters. Um, that uh, goes very fast. Like it's much quicker death than uh, the animal would have naturally, um, because the only other options for a moose to die are going through the ice um, during breakup or freeze up or getting chased by wolves and taken down or getting killed by a grizzly bear and or suffering some kind of injury and then slowly dying so that's that all takes a lot longer than a minute or two it takes uh to die after being shot i i wrestled with this question a lot that's what i'm going oh, on yeah. about no, you have to know. yeah <laughs> because, yeah yeah because yeah, i do love animals a lot but uh yeah so anyway so um that's kind of what we do for food and of course then there's still stuff like coffee and pasta and whatever um that we have to buy at the store but uh, just being able to provide the meat and then veggies um from the garden for ourselves it takes a chunk out of um, the grocery bill and then for clothing i usually just buy used clothes um so yeah not a huge fashionista i'm afraid <laughs> I find it's a little overrated. I'm, I'm a big shoe wearer and I, you know, I, I'm a fitness professional. So most of the time I'm wearing sneakers, but you know, yeah. usually when I go out, I like to wear my cute shoes, but I had a, an issue with my foot. I had a stress fracture this year. So I've not been able to wear my cute shoes. And I'm like, you know, what? I, I survived. It was, it was sad in the beginning, but I survived without it. So maybe it's okay not to, not to have those cute shoes after all. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah it's funny how you know, sometimes when you're forced to make do without something then you're like huh oh, I can actually do it <laughs> right <laughs> we're we're talking now so are you always a hunt like off the grid um and don't have electricity or or like how do you stay connected either in general or like or or like today <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so I, I lived without any electricity whatsoever um, for seven years, um, just wow. outside the, the closest village. But uh, where we live now, um, we did the first eight months out in the bush without 
basically any means of communications. We just had a VHF radio and one person we could talk to. On it. <laughs> and uh, we were at the, for a time uh, thinking of having a business out there, like a basically like a youth hostel or international hostel for hmm. people who wanna go on a wilderness trip in the end decided not to do it but anyway so in order to uh, be able to run a business out there we decided uh, to have satellite internet out there so mm. we do have that and uh, that's a huge help um, for me I ended up becoming a writer and literary translator as you can hear by my accent I'm from Germany originally <laughs> and um, so I translate books uh, from English into German and uh, so the satellite internet helps with that but uh, our only source of power is one 80 watt solar panel and all that powers is the uh, modem for the satellite internet and uh, three LED lights and uh, yeah so that's wow. basically uh, as fancy as we got <laughs> out there and uh, I, I used to, for the first 10 years or so out there, I just came out uh, twice a year usually um, for a total of maybe three weeks and the rest of the time I was just out in the bush. But uh, then my uh, parents started getting sick and uh, they're over in Germany. So oh. for the last years now, I've been making annual um, trips to go and see them and visit yeah. them. And uh, I'm right now in Southern France. I tried to have a bit of a holiday um, on this trip, uh, going to see my mom. My dad has passed away by now. And um, because it's it's not that easy, um, kind of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Being there for sure. Her. And uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm doing that. I'm I'm trying to uh, enjoy it, and I, I do enjoy it to a point. But uh, I'm a little bit homesick. I, have to admit. <laughs> I, I would much prefer to just be sitting at home now in the ice fog and maybe have a moose wander by the window. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's that's just what it is. Because one problem is if I go away in the winter time. Um, as I mentioned, it takes uh, the lakes about three and a half months uh, to freeze up solidly. So if I leave um, like in late October, early November, I basically can't come back in until mid-February. So oh, wow. yeah, that's why I'm sort of committed to yeah. uh, spend this winter out in civilization. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I kind of try to do a bit of traveling um with my ex who really loves traveling i'm not a huge traveler but uh, i really want to do some long distance hikes and mm. uh, i'll be doing the arizona trail next winter we wanted to originally do that last winter but uh, his knee didn't uh, cooperate so we couldn't do it but uh, yeah so that's on my agenda next winter and then again because uh, I can't get back in until mid-February I'll be mm. out and kind of bouncing around next winter but uh, after that I'll, I think I'll stay home for a longer stretch I was already <laughs> thinking now, I don't really want to be gone all of next winter but oh, I kind of have to do it because of um, you can only hike the Arizona Trail basically in spring and uh, late fall, and spring won't work for me. So yeah, sure. that's just what it is. <laughs> yeah, it gets hot. It gets hot there. I I know that because I drove through there in June. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh goodness. Well, you and you we do have a I know we said that your your book, your memoir is in German, but you have a blog that is in English that shares some of your adventures. So do you want to tell listeners where they can go to find that? Oh, sure. Yeah, you can find that at uh, penarctica.com. So it's pen like the pen and uh, arctic arctica like the arctic and then and with an a in the end. <laughs> mhm. Mm Oh, it's awesome. Well, Nicole, I'm, I'm glad that you are in civilization, you know, 
this month so we could meet each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been total fun. <laughs> and thanks for being a guest on the show. Oh, thank you so much for the interview. It was fun. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine. And I really hesitated to come back on the show since I know this is a very extended episode. And I usually don't have my episodes go this long without breaking them into two. But I figured, you know, this was a synopsis of Nicole's memoir broken down into an episode. And I did talk a lot at the beginning. So why would I talk a lot at the end? Hmm. Because I know those of you listening want to be here, right? So I just wanted to mention some of you might have missed yesterday's episode, which was also on the longer side, but I didn't even plan to have these episodes back to back initially. But when I went back to edit today's episode, I was so struck by how Nicole kept talking about how her different life is what brings her joy. And yesterday's episode was with Agape Stasinopoulos, and she was talking about how to find your joy. And based on her book, Wake Up to the Joy of You, which I highly recommend and love and has brought me a lot of joy in my life, and I share a small part of that story on the episode I did with with Agape yesterday, my conversation with Agape that I shared yesterday. But I encourage you to, you know, take in what you heard from Nicole, listen to Agape if you haven't, take in what you heard from Agape, and just reflect on that this week. What brings you joy? How can you do more of that in your life and less of what doesn't, whether or not other people think that that's okay or not? Obviously, you have to pay your taxes even if they don't bring you joy, but you know what I mean. I hope that you'll you'll take these listeners' stories to heart and we'd love to hear how things go for you as you work on that. And of course, finally, I have to end the episode by reminding you to subscribe so that you get to hear tomorrow's episode more people can find the show and really finally to go grab my book super women's secrets revealed successful women talk about fitting and fitness and dare you to join them that's going to help you add more joy to your life because it's going to inspire you to get moving to see it as not just something on your to-do list you'll learn how and why women who are successful fit fitness into their busy routines and find that it gives them a benefit so I want you to check that out in celebration of the book becoming a bestseller in three categories, it's just 99 cents right now. So I want to save you money. I know the holidays are coming up. So make sure you grab that book while you can. It's appreciated. And thanks for listening to the show. I hope you do subscribe and I'll get to chat with you tomorrow. Bye for now.